Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to present first, second and third year English uh, exams. Of course, uh, this academic year was like very um, special compared to the previous years and we found difficulties at actually designing the suitable lesson plans according to the new plannings and of course uh, to design uh, tests and exams according to the uh, planning which uh, have been adopted uh, due to the conditions we uh, were living and we still live in actually. So um, uh, now we move uh, directly to the first year English exam. Uh, of course for this year um, the inspectors have asked us to uh, stop at sequence 4 and to not deal with the with the fifth sequence. Um, what we do next year, inshallah, uh, if you are going to uh, take uh, two MS in charge, so you just have to uh, review with them the grammar points uh, introduced and included in the fourth sequence, in the fifth survey sequence of the first year English program. Uh, so, uh, concerning uh, the text that I have chosen for uh, this year, so it's a text talking about, of course, uh, duties and uh, rights. Uh, it's not very, uh, not a very short test and not a very long one. It suits the level uh, of our pupils. Uh, so concerning the time they're going to devote uh, for each year, it's one hour and a half. So it, like first, second, and third year, one hour and a half. Uh, now we move directly to uh, part one, reading comprehension. So here, uh, avoid, I would say, um, you can introduce uh, not mentioned in the first uh, activity of reading comprehension, uh, but just deal with this in the test and in the exam, just try to make it explicit, not easy, but explicit. So here, write true or false. You may add, uh, correct the false ones. And the second uh, activity, answering the following questions. Of course, if you provide your pupils with three sentences in true or false, just provide them with two questions in the answering questions and vice versa to have uh, a good marking. Uh, we move to uh, C, which is, of course, uh, Alex's activity. Your pupils are going to look for uh, big and rights, nice and dirty in the text and you explain to your people since they are really young you just express parts just like bina al fikri in arabic to not like choose or put uh, words from their minds because most uh, pupils get confused uh, as far as this activity is concerned we move directly to part two mastery of language here since uh, sequence four talks about um, uh, present continuous and prepositions of uh, time so I have uh, chosen to uh, provide them with a reordering activity as a first activity in Master of Language and the second activity they're going to uh, put in uh, prepositions of time and the third activity of course it's a pronunciation uh, lesson I think that this lesson has not been omitted so we just have to follow the planning uh, which has been adopted. Now we move to uh, part three, written expression. Of course, your pupils are going to uh, talk about their rights and duties. Uh, we have already dealt with this in the test. And of course, you just have to contextualize your uh, instruction in this part. This is very important. Now we move directly to uh, second uh, year English exam. So here we have uh, all the sequences are going to be taught, uh, including the grammar lessons. And we have some uh, grammar lessons which have been added to this sequence. For example, future simple with its three forms, beginning to with its three forms, and the present simple. Uh, so here, if you see the sequence, the grammar uh, points of the sequence, you're going to see that it includes uh, past simple regular irregular verbs uh, yes no questions and um, forming adjectives with y and forming nouns with asian so there is uh, i think that they have not omitted uh, the lessons included in the fourth sequence but they have just added so what i did I just uh, chose a text talking about uh, someone who went uh, on vacation to uh, London and he wrote the report of his trip. So all the verbs are going to be in the past simple. And by the end, I'm going to somehow introduce 
um, implicitly the grammar points that I have that they have uh, actually added to the sequence to be actually uh, fair. So uh, concerning the first uh, part, which is reading comprehension, here we can introduce not mentioned because they are second year pupils. And here we have two statements in questions. We have WH question, we have yes or no question. And of course, this is actually, so here I relied on the lesson of yes or no questions. And uh, then we uh, are going to ask them to find a synonym and an antonym in the text uh, of these words. The second part, mastery of language, uh, in the first activity, I have of course, uh, drawn a table and they are going to fill in it. Uh, with noun and verbs, it depends on the on the word. The second uh, the second activity is a form based activity, where I ask my people to put the verb in the correct form. Here they're given to guess which tense is suitable according to the context of the passage. And the last activity in the first in the second sorry part is of course to do and eat, and you have to explain to your people that this lesson is very important. Uh, this one and so and is because because they are going to deal with them even in the uh, in the high school. Now uh, here in the written expressions, I am going to ask my pupils to uh, write um, a detailed itinerary uh, to be uh, sent to uh, a friend of them who is going to visit Algeria next summer. Of course, they're going to write this itinerary on an email and send it to. Uh, their, uh, their their friend. Okay, so here I'm going to ask them to use the future and the beginning too because it's like a future plan. They're going to use demonstratives. Uh, this one is also included in the fourth sequence. Using time markers, directions and prepositions of location and talking about the weather in, of course, their region. So this way I think that I was really fair uh, to include the lessons of the fourth sequence and the added lessons. We move, my dear followers, directly to the third year uh, English exam. Here, uh, also, uh, the fourth sequence has not been uh, omitted. So, here I'm going to uh, provide them with a text about an animal, any animal you wish. Here I chose panda. And I am going to uh, provide them with activities. Of course, the first activity is going to be true, false, not mentioned, and they correct the false ones. Uh, the second activity, answering questions. And the third activity, finding uh, opposites and synonyms. We move now to the second part, mastery of language. So here, the first activity is going to be uh, an activity of verbs. So they have to put the verbs in the right form according to uh, the sentences. Uh, B, they're going to combine uh, sentences using as and therefore uh, for results and cause. And the last activity, they're going to uh, circle the silent letters in the words. Of course, this is the only lesson uh, which is mentioned in the new planning. Uh, now we move to the written expression of uh, this uh, exam. So uh, here, this is my own context, and now you're really free to provide them with the written expression you wish. They just have to talk about an animal. So here, uh, your English friend has asked you about the reason you call your national football team the Phoenix. So here, uh, write him an, a message or uh, an email uh, introducing this animal. Uh, and give him some information. So it's a very simple uh, instruction. And of course, they have already dealt with this in the lesson of I think and write. Uh, that's all, my dear followers. Uh, thank you for watching this video. I hope it was really useful. Uh, thanks again for all your comments and your motivation. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye.